They are the children mainstream Palm Beach County public school teachers allegedly didn't want to teach. All I had was my mother worried, you know, other people, you know, worried about whether am I going to make it in the school system or not. Once that child has a label in your traditional schools, they do not attempt to educate that child. Now remember, it's not West-South, it's South-West. Negative labeling of their children plus low expectations equals frustrated parents. Okay, the minute they don't know a material or a certain material, they have to be labeled. But thanks to a new school and some dedicated educators, these children are rejecting negative labels and are standing on the shoulders of their ancestors to reach the top. Stay with us for the next hour as we examine the remarkable journey of children, parents, and educators who are reaching new heights from the bottom rung of the educational ladder. Hello, I'm William Giles. Charter schools are a relatively new concept throughout America. People both inside and outside of education still debate the need for such schools. Indeed, many charter schools have already failed in their short lifespan. Add to that the concept of an African-centered charter school and the difficulties multiply exponentially. That possibility was not lost on the founders of the Joseph Littles and Guzu Saba Charter School in West Palm Beach. But as we learn throughout this presentation, Joseph Littles and Guzu Saba is realizing some great successes, and many parents are forever grateful the founders fought and continue to fight hard to keep the school operating. It says in the blue line, a line of the symmetry, which is yes or no. At 7 o'clock in the evening, the Hobbs household in Riviera Beach is quiet, but very busy. After preparing dinner, LaShawn Hobbs, a single mother of six school-aged children, works studiously with each child until every page of homework is finished. Except for weekends, this is a daily ritual in the Hobbs household. LaShawn Hobbs vigilantly practices parental involvement in her children's education with a clear understanding that that's the only way for them and her to have a future better than their past. Oh, it's going to be excellent. It's, it's going to be, um, you know, outstanding because now it's like, okay, I got them on the right track and then between home and at school. For Hobbs, the right track means taking all of her children out of Palm Beach County's mainstream public schools and enrolling them in the Joseph Littles and Guzu Saba Charter School in West Palm Beach. Yes, Jaisha? His background. And what would his background be telling us, um, Akini? Joseph Littles and Guzu Saba is an African-centered charter school that focuses not only on excellence in academics, but also building character and good citizenship first and foremost. The school is a godsend for the Hobbs family and most other families who have enrolled their children at Joseph Littles in Guzu Saba. And I think the parents too needed something to believe in and they believed that we were there to save their children and to care for their children. One of the things that we have always done from our beginning days is nurture our children. We don't have a policy like I understand they have in some schools that you can't touch the children. And the parents could see the love coming from us. We have children that come to us that haven't slept all day, all night, that uh, have two or three people coming in out of the home all times of night, uh, come from domestic violence situations. Um, sometimes they come from situations where they've had been exposed to abuse. Uh, physical and mental abuse and they try to bring this baggage into a, a new environment on a, on a Monday morning and it's suppo everything's supposed to be alright and they mentally can't process all this and know that it's not their fault so they start acting out in the public schools it tends not to be as sympathetic and not as accommodating and they fail miserably I got six. Before enrolling her children in Joseph Littles and Guzu Saba, Miss Hobbs swirled around in a downward spiral of despair, 
and a sense of helplessness as the Palm Beach County Public School System classified her children with learning disabilities, a stamp that typically spells a bleak and sometimes disastrous future for children well into adulthood. Once that child has a label in your traditional schools, they do not attempt to educate that child. What they do attempt is to keep that child in some sort of controlled uh, environment so that they do not hurt themselves or have a chance to hurt anyone else. Those kind of children would generally be written off and they would eventually end up being the ones who are on the streets trying to hustle drugs, uh, pimp women, snatch pocketbooks, jack cars, and all of the other sorts of antisocial behavior patterns that none of us would like to see people engaged in and certainly none of us want to be victimized by. Ms. Hobbs' 13-year-old son, Robert, was too young to understand the consequences or even why he was labeled with a learning disability while attending a local mainstream elementary school, but what he could understand was that it was having a very disturbing effect on his family. As a youngster, I didn't really know what it was. Uh, you know, I, I, only ha I only understood it when I got, like, older, what, what I was labeled for. But when I was young, you know, all I, all, all I had was my mother worried, you know, other people, you know, worried about whether am I going to make it in the school system or not. The first piece of material that a teacher gives the students, okay, the minute they don't know a material or a certain material, they have to be labeled, which I don't think that's, you know, that's not right. But at a charter school, it's more like, okay, they don't see that. They don't see, they, like, they don't see it and they see it. But they're not going to label a child. What they're going to try to do instead of labeling that child, they're going to try to make some progress. These children are, for all practical purposes, kind of kicked to the curb. And they're allowed to kind of flounder around in the system until finally they're filtered out. Our philosophy is that these children can learn and we have to be uh, sensitive enough to find ways to reach them and with that they can not only uh, make it, they can succeed and excel. Well, I am somebody. I may need to study harder. I may need to read more. I may need to watch TV less. Administrators, teachers, and staff at Joseph Little's and Guzusaba work diligently to reverse what they perceive as damage caused by the public school system's labeling process. At the beginning of every school day, each teacher simultaneously engages the children in a ritual known as Umoja time. Glory and suffering of our ancestors. And honor the struggles of our elders. And honor the struggles of our Umoja time consists of a litany of Afrocentric pledges and songs combined with the Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag and the singing of the Black National Anthem. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. The recitals and songs are designed to build character and self-esteem in keeping with the school's mission to provide each student with opportunities to become the very best human being he or she can become. Yumoja is one of the seven principles of Kwanzaa, an African-centered holiday which sets forth rules for uplifting one's personal behavior as well as responsibility to family and community. The seven principles are represented in the school's name. Nguzo and Saba are terms in the African language of Swahili, with Nguzo meaning rules and Saba meaning seven. The school's name also honors a pioneer African-American educator in Palm Beach County, the late Joseph Littles. The seven principles are typically observed by most African-Americans during the celebration of Kwanzaa, which is around the same time as the Christmas holiday season. Administrators at Joseph Littles and Guzu Saba believe that's not nearly enough for their students. We invest in these children on a daily basis. We imbue them uh, with the seven principles of the Nguzo Saba and the seven rules of Ma'at on a daily basis. It's not that they have to wait until the Kwanzaa season to be exposed to these principles. They get a heavy dose of that every day, in fact, every morning before they even go to class for their academics. They get infused 
with the need for them